Time to talk some Gamecock baseball as we do every Monday with the head coach of the Gamecocks. Mark Kingston, Carolina, goes down to Gainesville, takes the first two, and a uh, nail-biter yesterday, but Florida did take the uh, the final game of the series. Carolina's first loss in a Game 3 in conference play, but again, more importantly, they had won the first two of the series. Coach, always appreciate the time. Uh, nice trip back home for you guys on the bus from Gainesville. Uh, the importance uh, of this series win on the road at this point in the season is what? Well, I think it concluded a really good week for us. Uh, going back to last Sunday, uh, we beat what is now the number one team in the country in Texas A&M, who appears to be quite the juggernaut right now. They they dominated Vanderbilt all weekend, and, and so we started the week uh, with a victory against them. Then we had a great win against North Carolina on Tuesday night in Charlotte in front of a great crowd, and, and they're ranked in the top ten right now. And then to go down to Gainesville and win, win that series uh, for the first time since 2011, uh, I just think it was one of the better weeks we've had around here in a long time. So I'm hoping we can build on it uh, because – it shows the kind of team we can be, uh, but there's still some areas we're looking for consistency. But on our on our good days, we, we've shown we can beat anybody. You and Coach Williams did decide to put Ty Good uh, into the Saturday start slot, the game two at least uh, starting slot. Becker went on, on Sunday, yesterday for you. Uh, neither had terrific outings, but do, do you see enough to – to stick with this, and we've asked you a bunch about how fluid your rotation is. Um, maybe take us through what led you to, to get those guys in and, and where you are now ahead of the uh, the weekend series with Arkansas. It's going to remain fluid. Um, it's just I thought they, they were solid, but, you know, the stats so far have, have told us that those guys are much better out of the bullpen for whatever reason. So we have decisions to make as we move forward. We get stats on everything, as you might imagine, and – so we get stats on how Matthew Becker performs out of the bullpen versus in a starting role. And the same with Ty Good and the same with all of our pitchers. And so as we continue to go forward and get more information on these guys, uh, we're going to make decisions based on what, what the stats tell us and where guys fit the best and, and, and do the best. So uh, I think you, you're going to continue to see that starting rotation stay fluid until we find what is the best combination of where guys perform the best. And, uh, and and what's the best combination of putting all those puzzle pieces together. Mark, one of my favorite elements of baseball is just the idea and strategy behind putting together a hitting lineup. And I noticed there's a little bit of a wrinkle this weekend with Cole Messina in the leadoff spot, and he hit really, really well. And obviously you guys were able to put up a, a good amount of runs. But what went into that decision, and how do you think that might have benefited you here in this particular series? Yeah, I thought it was a really good look. Uh, there were a couple of things we wanted to do, you know, with what we did lineup wise this weekend, and, and it ended up we scored 28 runs this weekend at Florida. So obviously, you've got to label that a success. Uh, but Cole and I had joked about that for a while, and, and actually, in the Fall World Series, he was one of the captains on one of the teams, and his team had lost the first game. And in Game Two of the Fall World Series, he he let himself off because he said he just was going to be the tone setter for his team because. That's how much he wanted to win. And so I, I joked, you know, at that point, hey, at some point, you never know, I may do that with our team in the in the spring. And so uh, we joked about it again about a week ago. And he said, Coach, if you, if you want me to do that, if you need me to do that, I'll do whatever you think is best for the team. And I thought about it some. And, and if you look around baseball now, the leadoff position has kind of evolved. It's not just the slap hitting guy that might steal a base. You look at Florida's team last year, and they let off Wyatt Langford, who's already in the big leagues. And Mike Trout leads off, and he's a power hitter. And Kyle Schwarber has let off, and he's a power hitter. And, and so it's kind of evolved a little bit. And so I wanted to see what that looked like with him being the tone setter and, and kind of being the first guy that the other team has to contend with, both at the beginning of the game, but every time our lineup flips over. And it also allowed us to do something else we wanted to give a shot, and that was to stagger our righties and our lefties uh, so that allowed our lineup to go right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. And so I thought that was it was a harder look for the pitcher. Um, you know, it's something I've always wanted to do, but the way our hitters lined up, it just so happened that our best hitters were righty and, and our secondary hitters were lefty. And so we put them, we put them in that manner uh, in the lineup. But I just wanted to give it a look. I wanted to give both those things a look. Uh, Cole leading off and then stagger the righties lefties and and I thought it was as good a weekend as we've had offensively in all three games as, as we've had in a long time. 
Talking to Gamecock head baseball coach Mark Kingston again, Carolina taking two of three at Florida. They won four of their last five at the Citadel tomorrow night. And then uh, one of the best teams in the country, the Arkansas Razorbacks in town this weekend. All right, Mark, you've done this with me for a while. So bear with me here. I'm going to ask you a long question and give you as much time as you uh, will we'll take to, to answer it. Last week on this show, Elijah and I talked with you about Will Tippett and, and his defense versus his offense. I know you were asked a lot about that and other media availabilities uh, during the week because Will does play elite shortstop defensively but has been struggling at the plate in conference play. This weekend, he goes four for 12 with a homer, two doubles, uh, a couple of walks, and, and feels a lot better about himself. So I want you to talk first about just the week that, that you and, and Monty and, and others maybe have have had with Will, but then in a more in a more uh, general coaching sense, where you as a head coach kind of draw that line between a guy that you need defensively, but that when it's not going well, you, you know you've got to do something about it from a personnel standpoint. Well, that's a that's a good question. Uh, it's a loaded question. I will ask you guys a question to see how much you're actually paying attention to our games. So, as you put me on the spot all the time, I'm going to put you guys on the spot and see if you can come through. Uh, what did you notice different about Will Tippett this weekend compared to previous weekends at the plate? Uh, he he wasn't switch hitting. Correct, correct. That's that's good. You passed your test Thank with you. flying colors. Good job, Jay. Thank you, Coach. Um, we met with Will Tippett earlier in the week and, and and said, Will, you know, it's this trying to do both sides stuff. It's just it's just not working right now. It doesn't mean you won't go back to it at some point. Um, but instead of trying to be good on two sides, we need to focus on your natural side, and uh, we need to give this a shot and 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 hope that it can spark him and spark our team. And as you mentioned, it did. It paid immediate dividends. Uh, two doubles, a homer, walks. Uh, he was a real, he was a good offensive player for us this weekend, and so I think that's number one. If you if a guy is bringing enough other things to the table, it buys him time uh, to try to figure out the offense. And with him, there was a tangible change we thought we could make that might help him to be more productive, and it worked. At least it worked this weekend. So uh, with him, because he was playing such good defense, because he was. Uh, running the bases incredibly well, leading our team in stolen bases. That bought him time for us to try something offensively, and uh, the results we got this weekend were very, very good, and, and, and I'm hoping that that continues. I just gave myself a gold star, Coach, so thank you for that. And you deserve it. Good job. <laughs> I was, I'll be honest. I didn't think you were going to get the answer right, so good job. Thank you. I don't know what that's a lot says. of confidence. Yeah, a lot of confidence in you. Nice. I mean, come on. We've been doing this for a while. You have zero confidence in me, Mark. I, I you know, I, I, I do what I can here, but you know, no, no, I'm kidding. No, I, seriously, that, it's it's good to see because I, I we were talking about this, and I know a lot just got one more for you, but but this is your shortstop. You know, we had a guy call last week, and he was a nice fan, but said maybe a platoon with Lee Ellis, and I'm like, well, this isn't left field, you know, where you can just so freely kind of platoon a guy based on what he may or may, or may not be doing offensively. This is your shortstop. And you really, you just, you can't, well, you can, but you don't want to do that with your shortstop, right? Yeah, I would compare it to a, a point guard. You know, a point guard maybe may have a really low shooting percentage, but if he's getting assists, if he's a great floor general, if he's really leading your team and, 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 and providing the right chemistry that everybody around him needs, um, you just keep working on his shot until the, sh the shots start falling. And that's what I would compare him as our shortstop to. He's, he's an anchor in the middle of that lineup. Uh, and, and we just felt like, again, Lee Ellis is a talented player, and I think he's going to be a good player, but he's just inexperienced right now, and he, he needs to continue to get stronger um, to become the kind of player that, that, that we look at in that role. So, um, you know, Will has, because he's done all those other things well, it bought him some time, as I said, and, and I'm hoping he's a, he's a much better natural hitter right-handed because that's his natural side. So uh, hopefully that, that's something that we, we found a spark and, and, and something that we'll, he'll really be able to build on. And, Mark, I know earlier you are talking about, you know, pitching and figuring out where people belong best, and that's still, you know, kind of a fluid situation. But I think what we know pretty well is that Eli Jones is a pretty uh, pretty reliable starter, had an awesome game on Friday, and I think his stability was one of the keys to be able to uh, uh, keep Florida at, at bay. But what's, it, I guess, kind of an ad for to have a pitcher like that when you're trying to figure out a whole lot of other roles, you really know what you have with them? 
Yeah, he's been our most consistent guy. There's no question about it. Um, he gives us a chance to win. I think he's made nine starts, and he's made, he made eight good starts. You know, outside of the one last week, um, he's made eight out of nine really good starts, and that's a that's a darn good percentage for a starting pitcher in this league. So uh, he's everything we hoped he would be. He's mature. He's a winner. He's a great team guy. Uh, he's he's just been such a breath of fresh air for us this year, and I'm so happy for him because he's such a great kid and comes from a great family. He's a great kid. He's a great student. Uh, he's a great representative of, of our baseball program. Coach, last thing for you real quick. You head down to Charleston tomorrow night. Always uh, difficult to go against the Citadel. They like they like beating the Gamecocks. Uh, SQ threw yesterday. He started for you last week. What are you looking at tomorrow night? You know yet? Yeah, we do. I don't know that it's a bit announced, and I'm sorry not to break it on your show. Um, I, I forgot to ask Matt before I came on today if we – made it public yet so um i will tell you it will not be dylan sq we'll go in a different direction just uh, to keep dylan coming in out of the pen uh, for now so it will be somebody else it will not be dylan sq i'll try not to take it personally that you didn't break it here on the show after you you know basically just just rip my heart out after uh, trying to follow the team here so no, you passed your test, so well, that's a good thing. That's, that's good. a good thing. Yeah, I appreciate you. Now, all seriousness, uh, congrats on the weekend. That uh, Carolina goes to eight and seven on the uh, the year in conference play. They are twenty five and eleven overall. Again, at the Citadel tomorrow night, we'll have it for you here on one hundred seven five. The game in Columbia, and then Arkansas in town this weekend. Appreciate you as always, sir. Have a good week. We'll talk to you soon. Okay, thanks, guys. You bet. That is Gamecock head baseball coach Mark Kingston. Follow up on a few of the other numbers uh, from the Carolina series win at Florida when the postgame show continues.